In this video, we're gonna talk about what is prop trading. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so what is proprietary trading or prop trading as it's called? Now I'm looking at this from a perspective of an office of traders that would have employees like you and I coming in as opposed to a bank, which may have a section, not so much anymore since Dodd-Frank, but would have a proprietary trading section. So distinguish between the two, let's discuss it. So prop trading firm basically says, hey, you know what? If you're any good, you can come and trade my money. Uh, let me see if you're any good first. So they might have kind of some criteria. Perhaps you've got to go through their own training program. And if the, the best ones at the training program then will move to the prop side of it, or they want to see your kind of statements to see how well you've been doing, how much money you've been making, what the strategy is, they want to speak to you. They basically want to see that you could make them some money. That's the business they're in. So the deal is basically, hey, you know what? If you can make me some money, I'll give you more money to trade with. Just like a business would invest in another business and say, hey, I like your business model. Here's some money. I'm expecting to get a return on that money and you haven't got the money at the moment, but you've got the skill, then, then we've got a deal there. So that's kind of what prop trading does. So you might go to a prop trading desk and they might say, okay, do you know what? Um, you know what? Let's say your name is James. James, you're doing... Um, very well in your trading, we'd like to invite you onto the desk. Now the desk would work like this. They would say, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you um, a bank roll of 200,000, okay? Now depending on what you're trading, and we'll go into that in a second, we're gonna a bank roll of 200,000, and we're gonna give you a daily risk parameters of, uh, let's say 2,000 to start off with. You're gonna have a, a maximum position size of uh, you know 20, 20 lots. Um, I'm just making these numbers up now, guys. It could be, you know, it depends on what you're trading. You know, some prop traders are trading interest rate futures, spreading them, which is kind of less risky, but more intensive on the lot size. Some people are trading outrights like crude oil or, or other things. Some people are trading stocks. It, it, doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter. The point is there's gonna be some parameters put in place for you. And that's the deal that you're gonna have presented to you. They'll say, hey, you can trade the money. There's gonna be a cap on the risk. There's gonna be a cap on the position size. And there probably will be another cap on kind of uh, how much position you can have in any one, how much uh, exposure you can have in any one position. So you probably might, might say, okay, we can trade up to, let's say 100 lots, but you can only have 20 in one position or correlated position. So you can't have far month crude oil long 20 and near month crude oil long 20, but you could have you know far month long 50 uh, and near month short 20 or, or whatever that may be. I don't wanna get into complicated kind of scenarios of what the strategy would be, but you get the point. Um, they put it in forex terms, you couldn't have you know, a couple of US dollar pairs with all your position size on, you'd have to cap it. So it's just common business sense. This is just for commercial reasons. They don't want to be exposed uh, too much. So, and then have stuff like you can trade overnight, you can't trade overnight, just to protect their money that they've got. Because even though they're saying to you, you've got 200,000, really that number's meaningless. That could be 200 million. The, what the number, the most important number is how much you're allowed to risk each day, because uh, it's generally a day trading activity, trading prop, and what your position size is. And then the key thing is what the split is. So you might have a split that's kind of 70-30. So in other words, you get to keep 70% of the profits and they get to keep 30% of the profits. And generally speaking, in a prop trading environment, they are gonna swallow the loss, but they're not, the point is they're not gonna take you on board until they know that you've, you're a good bet to bet on. Uh, and that's the risk they take. So they're doing all their due diligence on you. They're checking your strategy, checking the weaknesses in your strategy, interviewing you, doing all that kind of stuff, and then saying, okay. But in reality, their risk is quite capped because you know they're gonna say, all right, two grand a day, or whatever that figure may be. They're probably even gonna start you lower than that just to see and work you up. Um, but ultimately, at any point, they can just pull the plug and say, it's not working, you know, we're gonna have to move on. Now, a good prop deal will, will get better and better with time. So the risk, they'll encourage you to trade more. And this is a good thing about a prop environment, and they've got the funds there, and they will encourage you to trade more. They'll say, listen, you're doing very, very well. Um, you've made a bit of money, we've made some money. We want you to trade more aggressively now. We're gonna up that to kind of 40 lots. We're gonna up that to 4,000, and they'll do a review. So regularly review you, and give you more size and more leverage to play with and, and hopefully increasing your profitability. And it's your job as a prop trader then to say, okay, well actually, and I'm doing well, you know, I, I want 80-20 now. Um, and you know, the best guys out there are doing 90-10, 
uh, you know, it's, it's all negotiable, just like any business deal. It's all very, very negotiable, depending on your your skill, uh, depending on who you're working with, depending on how valuable you are, what you're bringing to the table. You know, if you're making good, consistent money for the company, they're going to give you more and more funds, more and more risk to play with, more and more training, hopefully to improve your skill level, and more and more slice of the pie. So that's pretty much how um, it will work. And the other thing to, to, to kind of note, guys, is that you're also going to have uh, what's called a desk fee. So you have some fixed fees to pay. So if you're trading in the office, you'll have to pay um, for having that workstation, for having you know, all the feeds that you need, the market feeds, and you'll have to pay that to the prop trading company uh, each month as well. So you have to pay that, and then you'll have a high watermark point. So let's say you know your account balance is at 200,000, know, and then let's say at the end of the month, it goes to 220,000, you know, that might be the point. It'll all be set out in your agreement where they say, okay, that's when the profit split happens. Okay, we'll split that 20,000 uh, 20, into 70, 30, give you your money after the desk fees. That's your portion for the month. This is our portion for the month. Okay, we're now reset um, at that 220. Let's, 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 let's move, or whatever the number may be after you've taken your money out, they might perhaps they leave their money in or perhaps they take their money out. Who knows how they arrange it, but there'll be a high watermark. So the next month to get paid, you've got to get above that high watermark to be paid. You can't just make you know a little bit or you can't lose, you're not gonna be paid. And obviously if you lose two months in a row, you're not gonna be paid until you've gone back up into profitability. So it's all about the raw numbers at the end of the day. If you're making money, you're gonna get a good slice of it. If you're losing money, they're gonna swallow it up to a certain period of time. Now listen, if you've made um, a couple of hundred grand in, in a quarter or whatever it may be, and you have a bit of a down period, then the good thing about the prop firm is they're gonna probably take the risk off you a little bit and say, okay, you're not doing so well here, let's have a chat, speak to the risk manager, says, okay, just wanna halve your risk for the time being, just get back on track, the market conditions might have changed, and then we'll push the throttle again if, if things start picking up. And then, you know, you'll, you'll kind of tread water for a little bit, not make so much, maybe make a little bit, maybe lose a little bit, then you'll start picking up, and then you go in and say, hey, can I have some more risk, et cetera, et cetera. So, that's really how the prop tr uh, trading model works. And theoretically, they're gonna have a group of guys all doing this, maybe trading similar strategies, maybe making different strategies, but ultimately they're all their own little business in their own right, or making them money. They're providing the risk capital. These guys are providing the skill. In, a, in the perfect world, the, the traders who are providing the skill are being rewarded with a percentage of that. The company is providing the kind of infrastructure to trade from, and the capital is being provided with a kind of... Um, a percentage of that as well, and it's a win-win situation. Um, just one more thing to, before we before we move on is that a lot of prop trading firms will have educational programs, so they will use these edu educational programs. So you come in as a kind of paid. You have to pay for the course. You do the course. They run you through kind of the systems and strategies they use, and then at the very end of it, they use it as a feeder for the very sort of guys. So at the end of it, who are trading on a demo or perhaps with a small live account, you know, the ones that show the very best promise, you know, they'll take them to one side and they'll say, okay, you know, listen, we think you've got potential. Do you want to come and trade our account? We'll start you off small and they're going to start you off very small. It probably wouldn't be something like this. It's going to be very small at first because they need to make sure they're not risking too much. Obviously, you know, a couple of guys could blow the whole game up for them. So they're, they're going to start you small, but it's a kind of way of getting in potentially into their prop firm. Now, just a quick, quick sort of, check is that if you're doing something like that, make sure there is a genuine prop trading aspect behind that and it's not just a trading a training firm. Not to say there's not great training firms out there. Um, I'm definitely an advocate of paying for the right training if, you, if you're kind of serious about the business, but the right training. But if you're kind of going for something, looking for a further move into prop, then you probably need to make sure that it genuinely is people trading prop after that and that is an opportunity that could present itself if you happen to be um, of the right kind of level of trader they're looking for. So rough outline of how it all works. Hope that makes sense to you guys. Any comments, stick them in the comments section below and otherwise give it this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe for more videos from me and other traders on this channel. Take care guys, bye bye.